Welcome. 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 Please welcome. The Outdoor Project Podcast. Hear real conversations from industry leaders on the latest in the hardscape and landscape industry. Brought to you by Cincinnati Landscape Supply. You're now streaming the Outdoor Project Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Outdoor Project Podcast. Today we're sitting down with Justin Fox. He is with Realm Design Studios and California Landscape Studios. Justin, thanks for sitting down with us today. Hey, thanks for taking time to put me on. Man, I think we were uh, scheduled to be on location a couple weeks ago, but uh, this COVID-19 has really put a damper on our on our schedule. But it's nice I that know. we it was nice that we could do this on Zoom or on the you know with technology and stuff. But there's nothing better than sitting on one of those job sites with you and just really seeing and touching and you know being able to view the work you've done i mean you're you're a true artist thank you i appreciate that i'm excited for you guys to be able to come out and actually touch and feel it too it's going to be it'll be a special thing so you get this is like a precursor to that which will be cool you know we were we were all hyped to to come out there in april i think it was the beginning of april and just this whole covid19 thing it it really stinks. Um, I mean, we are looking forward to seeing, we see the the pools that you do on Instagram and it just amazes us how you even come up with some of this stuff. So, I mean, we were supposed to come up. Um, what job sites were we going to visit when we were coming up there? So the one I was going to actually have you guys record with me at was um, one that I haven't actually officially named yet. It's funny because I named these jobs, so it's not something I have put a name on it yet. But it was, it was a project you've probably seen on my stories, at least, that has like these glass steps uh, that kind of lead from one side of the pool to the other. And so I was going to take you there because this it's one of our longest pools that literally wraps around a half of the house. So it starts in the back and rounds the whole side. And the only part it doesn't wrap around is the driveway and the left side of the house. It's a, I think 120 feet long. Uh, so it's a really, really, so that's what we were going to be at. And it had a sunken, it had a sunken pit in the middle of the pool with the water around it. It has glass steps that are like a quarter inch below water. So you can't see them until you actually walk on them. And then it has some, uh, some other unique elements too. So that was the one that you guys missed out on. Wow. I know you talk a little bit about, you know, some of your designs and some of your sunken fire pit areas are your favorite. You know, I mean, uh, how many designers are you working with? Are you a sole designer or do you have a design team? So, no, I have two other designers that work with me. Um, one of them is my brother and another one is another really talented guy, too. So we have three of us that are really focused on design. And then I have a uh, we have a draftsman and then we have another um, design assistant who goes and gets all our um, like measurements and kind of redraws the the houses, uh, the, the the base model basically, and then we'll come in as a creative team and start putting the, all those the design elements together. How about the the building aspect of these pools? Now, do you have like in house construction crew, or do you guys use all subcontractors to build all these? Yeah, so we have 40 employees that build on our construction side. That's why you even introduced it with two different names, um, our business. So Realm Design is our, our design division, and we do projects all over. Even we just finished a couple in Texas. Uh, we're about to start in Florida. We do in Beverly Hills. But for building, uh, we use our construction company called California Landscape Studios, and that's a team of 40 employees. Uh, we do have a mixture of subs in there as well, but actual employees, there's about 40, 40 guys on those teams and we build a lot almost everything you're seeing is is our own team's building wow that's a it's fun because we did a we did a podcast with lucas lagoons and it seems like you guys have almost the same business model you might design a little bit different but um you know where did this all start i mean how did you get to start creating these pools i mean where did it all begin um, if we really start at the core, it really started as a nine-year-old kid. I, I started uh, saving money from um, money I would get from birthdays, from Christmas. Literally, no exaggeration, I would go, I remember nine years old, I went to uh, Home Depot and bought a pump. I had a shower curtain that my parents had. I, I dug a depression in the dirt on my side of my yard, put the pump in the middle, put the sprinkle rocks over the shower curtain, and have my first water fountain. And then I ended up building like a little walking path with my dad around the, the fountain. And, and then every time I could go to Home Depot and buy plants, I would buy plants. And I had created this whole garden for like a year. And that really sparked my love for outdoors and create, 
creating something outside. So that was the, the genesis of it all. And then after I graduated college, I got a business degree. In 2005, I started the, the, the construction uh, part of it. So That's the craziest things. I mean, we see all the time your, your renderings and your 3D designs that you have online. Do you drive your construction crew crazy with all the, the crazy ideas that you come up with that you have basically in your renderings? <laughs> I would say not crazy, but it's definitely not something they look at and like, okay, cool, we can do this. It's always a discussion that we have to have. But they've always told me that, and we have a lot of longtime employees, and they say they just like that there's something new. There's always something new. And even, even where we're at specifically in Orange County, it's like we have, we have other competitors sometimes trying to poach our guys. They're like, how do you guys figure this out? You know. But it's been a really cool thing. And a, I feel like we're on the product development side of landscaping in some some aspects too because it's like how are we going to do this um and so yeah i would say they they aren't driven crazy but they're always there's always a challenge for sure in a lot of the aspects we're doing you're almost like a magician with some of these things it's like you're you're floating floors or you're floating walkways um, yeah i mean just the layering that you're doing it's like how the heck do you even come up with some of this stuff um it's part because I've always loved working with my hands. I really do have an understanding, I feel like, of what is not just conceptual, but what can be built. And so I have like an overall understanding of, okay, if structurally this makes sense. I think we can build this or do this. And um, anytime I can try to just deviate a little bit from what the standard is, I feel like we've won. So I'm always trying to push it just a little bit. And like flowing aspects specifically is always one of those ways um, that just differentiates us from the, from the rest. Um, and it's not like we're the only one doing it, but it just, it does help. Yeah. And speaking of your competition down there, I know in California, LA, there's a lot of competition, um, direct competition to you. I mean, does that keep you motivated to design something bigger, larger, uh, more artistic, more fun? Does your competition motivate you to do bigger and better things? You know, honestly, I could say yes, it used to. Um, I was driven even even uh, not too long ago to, to always be the best, better better than everybody else. And I think I've kind of put that, that ideal to rest. And now I'm just trying to not focus on being better than the competition, but really trying to be best for our clients. And it's really been something where I'm like, I want them when they see this design to just be blown away or really feel like, oh man, I told you all these things. I never even thought though that it could come together like this. And so truly for me, I get so much joy and reward, not just you know in the pride aspect of, oh, we're better than everybody else, but just feeling a lot of uh, affirmation from our clients that, wow, this is just amazing. I, I went to a client's house, actually the one that we were going to do the podcast at, I was talking with him like two weeks ago. And he's like, Justin, my kids are in the pool so much, we had to take them to the doctors. Like, like they were in the water that much that they were starting to get rashes on their skin or something. Cause they were like, they were like in the water so much cause we're just enjoying it that much. And I'm not exaggerating too. It's just really cool. So, um, to have that kind of feedback where people are enjoying the space that much they're engaging is to me more what drives my, uh, wants to, what drives my creativity, I guess. Yeah. I seen, uh, I was watching one of your videos and you were showing, uh, another, 3d design that another person created for a, a project at a house and then really it was a it was a very small backyard i don't know if you, if you know which one i'm talking about but okay. you basically showed us the new new 3d design that you came up with on your own and just what you can do with such a small area it doesn't always have to be so simple i mean you can make right. it something that has such small space, you can make it something unbelievable. And you, and you do that. It seems like a lot. Hmm. Well, thank you. Yeah. I think I do remember the one you're talk, talking about. It was, uh, it was on your story mode. It's one of your saved stories on Instagram. What well, I think the biggest one to me, especially with the fun, the projects with the fun, the, the kids that can't get out of the pool, the, uh, Sapphire Sands is amazing yeah. to me. I mean, the call, I mean, pretty much everything about that and the fun, uh, that you had creating it, creating fun for that family was pretty amazing. Can you dig in a little deep onto the Sapphire Sands project? Sure. That's so funny because I remember that really well, but that was about 
whew, almost four, three or four years ago, I did that one. But um, they came to the client came to me and said, "Hey, uh, we really want to design this pool for our kids. We 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 don't really swim. The parents don't, but our kids love just get wet, and, and we want it to be interactive." And so I remember they, they gave me no direction though. They, just, they, didn't, they didn't say beachy, they didn't say like tropical. They're just like, we want it to be interactive. And so I was thinking about it and just, I remember driving specifically uh, for a while. I get a lot of my designs while I'm driving. And uh, I thought, man, how cool would it be to have a beach, a little island, and, and then for the parents to be able to sit and watch their kids. And that's why you have that sunken kind of area close by with the fire pit. Um, and you kind of you still have that kind of interaction. So it's not like the parents have to swim there, but they can enjoy just the view and their kids. And then there's, there's bubblers going around. So it really started with just like, it's always for me comes to with one aspect. And for me, it was like an island. If I could put an island in the pool, that'd be amazing. And then that led to, okay, now we can add a beach aspect to it, which would be really, really neat. And then let's, let's use the tile for color, colorful patterns. So you just visually, it looks really impactful. Um, and so it usually comes to me in layers, but it starts with some kind of core aspect to it. And having the island was for, for that specific job was this core aspect that started the design. Yeah. And the structure was beautiful too. But I think that, you know, what really caught me too was you had some, uh, some night pictures of the lighting and how fun the lighting was too. And then the, really the one thing that stood out amongst how beautiful the, the entire project was, was that lantern holder that kind of sat oh, yeah. over the fire pit. That was like one of my favorite pieces of you know of that project thanks yeah i almost forgot about that piece but um i drew it out on the 3d software and then i was like we were building it and i kind of forgot about it and at the end of the climb i was like i want that piece i kind of drew it just as a fun like throw it in there to see how like it was going to be more just a metal hang hook to kind of hold a light he's like no i want you to build that and so we had our guys come out with cardboard i remember standing there and, and literally we were uh they held a huge piece of cardboard out like a, like a big, like eight by four, whatever it was. And then I traced out that kind of design you see, we cut those out. We have a, we have our own in-house metal guy. That's why a lot of our metal stuff is like, we can have a lot of control over. And so he, he put it all together. Then I said, what if we drill little holes in it, put an led light inside the stem. So it's actually like, or this organic kind of living piece besides it just being a holder and uh, really came a focal point. So thank you for recognizing that. That was actually a really cool piece. Yeah. It was incredible. You know, in a lot of your, a lot of your projects too, and I'm glad you brought that up because you have um, in-house fabrication with the metal. A lot of the structures you see, very modern structures, like, you know, you would talk about a pergola or, or something like that. Are you making and designing those in-house? Yes. Yeah, a lot of those. So we have a structural engineer we work with. So anything that's requiring city code, we're not just like drawing it. And then, so we have a structural engineer that's incredible guy for 20 years so you can really take my ideas and make sure they're structurally sound and we can actually get permits for those so it's not just but some of the decorative elements um our own in-house guys we were just kind of figuring that out on the spot or on the job site wow i want to talk a little bit about the aqua garden the toll brothers at hidden canyon uh project yeah. um just the the things you had going on there and I just want to pause for a moment because I want people to actually see the video that you made on this project so they all know what we're talking about. So let's watch, right, cool. let's watch that real quick. Aqua Garden is pure insanity. It's one of my absolute favorite uh pools that I've done with a play of water. And that's why even the aqua garden makes sense because it truly is every possible way I could move or show off water. It started with the client asking me to design something that had never been seen before. Literally it's exact words. I want something I've never seen before. I've seen every uh, luxury pool. I've seen every model house. I want to combine every water feature possible and I want you to blend it and also make it something I've never seen before. So the challenge was set and it was really exciting for me and this took a little while to come up with, but it really started with the unique uh, water feature. And you'll see as you kind of walk through the, the doors in the backyard and you see this fountain and you kind of aren't sure if it's a fountain or a spa, and you see these levitating bowls, and 
the bowls are connected to uh, a corner spa. And so my idea was is that I would have this uh, fountain that was reflecting the, the atmosphere around it, having fire that looks like it's, it's literally floating. And then to, to really, again, accept the challenge of something I've never seen before, I thought, what if we put wire, uh, water that was like dropping or flying over the fire feature? So when I co combined those features, I had one area that I thought was 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 set to accept his challenge. Um, and then I thought about what if he had a floating deck? And that's really too one of my favorite things I was able to create with the space is that he has this deck and you look at it and it looks like the only way to get to it is to walk through water. And that's exactly what I wanted to achieve is that the only way you could get to this beautiful deck and the, to look and enjoy another angle of the, his uh, view was that you would have to walk through this, this water almost um, maze. And so that was really fun to design. And of course, there's a, there's a back way you can get to it. Um, another fun uh, aspect of this and combining a lot of his features that he wanted me to, to add was the beach entry. And I really allowed the uh, existing tile inside the house to blend through the California room. And then I took those, found some mosaic tiles that matched the color tone and then gradually bled those into a, a darker darker blues, almost as if you see in the ocean as it gets deeper, it gets darker. And so that was really fun and creating some organic shapes, even the tile on, on against the California room, I created some uh, angles that were all more organic in shape rather than just a straight edge. A really fun aspect of this too is when you see it at night. And night evokes that word insanity because we put lights wherever there was a possibility to run electrical. Lights all the way around the rim. I think there was 33 lights in this pool. Every possible area of the pool was lit up. And then as we were building this, the owner came up with this idea and I can't even claim it as my own. He's like, what if we put a tree that has lights in it? So we did some research and we found this tree that has, I think it has four or 5,000 little LED lights connected with all these plastic flowers. And so it really gave this incredible illumination and having the pool, having the, the, the water trough, having that water feature with the spa, you really get to see this mirror-like uh, reflection of this incredible tree. So that's why we call it uh, Aqua Garden because it truly is a, a use of water in every possible way. Wow. Yeah, it really that's is. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> how, it, long, how long did that project take you? Uh, that took us to build, I believe it was about nine months. That was a big, big job. Wow. This, I bet you that uh, your customer is just so happy to see the end result, the whole process of it. I mean, how is your inter interaction with your customers? I mean, is this something that's a day-to-day -day interaction and kind of um, leading through the design and making changes? Or are they, do they trust you with your initial design and um, – Maybe they add some input at the end or, or, you know, do you listen very well to your customers? That's got to be a big part is trust and, and making sure you're listening to your client. Of course, yeah, it's always a mixed bag of, of kind of um, interaction because there are clients that just say, do it all. I don't, I don't give you no input. I, I want a fire pit. I want a pool. And, and that's kind of what this client did. He said, um, and it's funny it, to back up for a second. I can almost uh, segment my clients by their reaction or not reaction, but how they give me input because business people or entrepreneurs are kind of really loose. They're like, just do whatever you want to do. Like, you know, and then I get some of the doctors and lawyers. Okay. Here's a, here's like our, my Excel sheet with 40 <laughs> things. You know, I just met with him yesterday. He literally gave me an Excel sheet. Here's my must haves, my wants and my maybes. And like, he's second in a while. And before I met with him, I said, you, you have to be in the medical profession. He's like, how'd you know? I was like, I just know. So there's, there's a mixed, there's a mixed uh, uh, connection, or not a connection, but a mixed uh, interaction with clients. But for this client, he, he was really, really cool. He, he owned like several businesses, so he's an entrepreneur. And he said, Justin, I've been to every model house uh, that's been open. He said, I want you to incorporate every cool detail that I've ever seen in, one, in a model house uh, from these Toll Brother homes. He said, I want a beach entry, I want a vanishing edge, I want uh, infinity, I want something I've never seen before on top of all that. So I'm like, okay, this is my kind of uh, client that I love to be able to do. And we don't get to do those all the time. I know a lot of stuff you're seeing is like, you know, really out of the box stuff, but it doesn't mean that every, every week's to kind of like, we get these kind of clients. So it's always special for us when we do get these and we take them really seriously. So um, anyways, uh, he, 
he, and he had almost no budget. It was just kind of like, you know, do whatever you can do, uh, which is also a, a dream to, to work on too. So we, uh, I started with, okay, he said he wants a beach entry, which I don't know how to do that, it, along with the infinity edge and then a zero edge. And so uh, pulling all those all together, but it all started with that kind of maze from, like I said, I always use that as some kind of starting point. And for me, it was like, how cool would it be to have two pools kind of divided by a water, you know? And, uh, and so that was a concept kind of separating the, the pool from the spa. And then he really wanted, he had an incredible view. He paid a lot premium. That was insane. And when you guys come out, I'll be able to take you to that job. But, uh, it really was me starting with that concept. And I showed him that and answer your question, like how much interaction he had, like he loved it. And we made some tweaks along the way. It's never, ever, I show a client and that's it. That, oh, that's perfect. Go for it. It's always some kind of adjustments. But usually it's uh, the clients trust us enough to say like the starting concept is strong. Let's just tweak it a little bit. And so that's what it was for him. Yeah. How about the, how about the other side? I mean, these customers seem like they're pretty easy going. Do you ever run into customers that maybe get confused or maybe there's too much going on where they don't want to do, do such a crazy project like that? Oh, absolutely. And, and, and really, like I said, going back to listening to our clients, I'm not going to show them a crazy diet. If, I, if we were talking with them in the initial phase and they're just like, I want it Zen, I want it simple, I want it this, we're just going to start right there. We're not always just going to start on these kind of elaborate kind of uh, layouts. So uh, the ones that get a lot of interest, though, are always the ones that are really out of the box unique. And I, I look at your designs and for me, you are a true artist. You said you went to you went to school for business, correct? Yes, yes. Did you really find out that you were this creative? I mean, for me, I, I'm an artist as well, and I look at you know on that last pro project, the balance, the colors, the designs, juxt juxtaposition of you know certain elements in there, the lighting and stuff. It's like, I mean, not everybody has a vision like this. You know what I mean? When did you really? figure out that you had to be a true artist really to, to, to create these pieces? Um, I would say it kind of hit me maybe recently, like probably two years ago, three years ago. Um, and I would say I've always had a passion for this, but I feel like true artists, it takes a lot of time to develop. It's not something you just kind of like, you know, here we go. Like my, my first uh, garden at nine years old was just, I mean, laughable. I mean, it was great for nine year old, right? But it wasn't like, wow, this guy's a really savant. Like he's really good to sign. It was just kind of like, oh, like, oh great for a nine year old. And then, and then even, you know, after I started my company in 05, I mean, I was doing stuff that just, you know, was terrible. It wasn't like I just started as this great designer. And I think it's just trying after, I think it was, um, so I'm in business in 05, so almost 15 years, right? So it's so after like 10 years, 11 years, I really started to feel like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of figuring this out. Like I'm, I'm seeing what works. I made a ton of mistakes. Um, I'm always looking out at what other people are doing and how can I do that better? And I think it just takes a ton of practice. I don't think you just kind of are instant, uh, I mean, you may be an artist instantly, but it, it's like the level of artist, artistry that comes out, I think it takes a ton of time to develop. You haven't been always doing these, these big pools. I mean, you said you got started in 05. Do you remember your first project that you did really when you started in business? A hundred percent. I remember uh, my first, I'll just say my first project at Orange County was um, a $7,000 job. And I remember going to this new neighborhood that had just opened up, knocking in every door and saying, hey, you know, I'm a landscaper. Can you give me a job? And everyone was like, oh, I want to see your other jobs. Like I don't have any, you know, it's my kind of my first area, my first one. And so uh, my first job was literally a back patio, an irrigation, and, and uh, I think a couple plants. And so that was where I started. And truly, it wasn't until probably like four or five years after that that someone said, hey, could you do a pool? And I'm like, yeah, no problem, even though I had no idea what I was doing. And so then I started calling other people and like, hey, could you help me with a pool? And like, you know, if there's money involved, of course, you can find somebody to do it. And so this then just kind of working, it started there and started with a very, very basic uh, square pool you know, 30 by 15 rectangular pool. And, uh, yeah. Again, we get back to the artistic part of it. We kind of all look at each other. And the first thing we've all noticed was your logo. We love oh, your logo, cool. the bird. I mean, it kind of is a symbol of, of your, of your artwork for me, who came up with that logo and, and, and why? 
Yeah, I, I did. I was with, uh, I don't know if you guys remember those Live Strong bands you used to wear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we were, my brother and I were driving like maybe like eight years ago. We were driving to go, I was going to go buy a new car. And, and I, I bent, bent I, was look, I was thinking about new logos. And I bent it into this shape and it looked like a hummingbird. And I was like, how cool would it be if our new logo was a hummingbird? It represents kind of a finished garden, you know? And even, even so I had a, and then I had a graphic design client who traded me some, his time to, to do it. Um, I did some stuff for him and he repaid me with the, the, the logo, the actual logo. So he did the logo, but I came with the concept. And I told, the, told him, I said, hey, when you're doing the logo for the, for the um, wing, I said, just integrate landscape element, make it kind of look like a leaf. And so that's kind of like the integration there. It's kind of subtle, but it's there. That's beautiful. Yeah, going back to the projects, um, we keep talking about the Aqua Garden, the yeah. Sapphire Sands. Which one, which project's your favorite personally? Personally, it would be the Aqua Garden for right now. It's just so out of the box, and that's kind of my, uh, like, I love when I get those kind of challenges. And so it was really cool, too, and just to, like you were saying, interact with clients. I, I talked with him. A month ago, I think we were like, we finished that job about a year or two ago, but he just had a wedding for his daughter in the backyard. He was like, Justin, it was amazing. He said, we didn't want to have it anywhere else. And this guy's, you know, obviously very well, well to do. And he could have had it anywhere. It's not like he had to have it in his backyard. And uh, he's like, we, it just blew people away having it hosted there. And he has a balcony up top too. So he had seats up there. He has seats below. And they actually had the wedding where the lit, lit up tree was or the, the ceremony part. So, um, but just just knowing that that kind of um, design was at the par that he wanted to have his own wedding there to me just was incredible. And so um, it's just been my that's been my personal favorite. Um, however, I do have a couple coming out that uh, um, they haven't they haven't photographed or anything yet that are just really, really unique. One specifically, I can't wait. Um, I was talking to him yesterday. I was just trying to get a time to photograph it, but uh, we put a, a actual sculpted beluga whale inside the pool, yeah. and it's a really, really unique piece. So I'm excited to get Actually, that one. Yeah. Get that one. It's funny you were going to say that because I brought this up before here, and I said I can't wait, especially when we go down to California or go over to California. I wanted to see the project with the beluga whale in it, and that for me, I've been <laughs> I've been eyeing that one for I think what it's about three or four weeks now. You've been kind of giving us some teasers. Joe was all excited to talk to you about that one, <laughs> it's like the beluga yeah. whale. But yeah. that wedding though is a testament to your work, though. I mean, for them mm -hmm. to tur not turn down, but to accept that their backyard at that point was the most beautiful space to hold a wedding is a testament to your work. And it's cool because our, our branding says from residence to resort. And really, it's yeah. really cool to be able to. And he, this guy owns uh, res, like hotels, uh, hotels and other places too. And he, he's like, I wanted to have it here. And so it's just really, really cool to like know that we're literally elevating someone's residence to that resort level that you can even have a wedding in your own yard. Yeah, me and Chris talked about that too. Is just that name, residential resorts, is just the perfect perfect description of what you do in people's backyards it is thank you three months it took to get to that point three months as i'm not even exaggerating our marketing team worked on three months to come to that simplistic but descriptive uh yeah it took a while yeah you have another project too that was pretty cool the one with the buddha with the water feature behind it which, which, which oh project? yeah yeah tell us a little bit about that project oh that was interesting because i walked the client called me and they and they said um, we're just looking, we already have a design done. We want you to come and just give us a quote to build it. And so I said, you know, okay, I'll, obviously I'll come and take a look. So I looked at their, I walked in their house, their house was very modern. And then I looked what their other designer had done and it was very tra tra traditional. It was just, it didn't connect. And I said, I usually don't do this. And I said, I usually charge for this, but I said, I'm just going to go out on a limb. I was going to, if you're okay with it, let me just redraw everything. You know, they already gone through the HOA. They got all the permits. It was ready to go. And it was kind of a big risk. Um, to, to even um, offer that. But they're like, okay, yeah, we'll just, you know, they're kind of like, whatever, let's see what you can come up with. And so I remember taking a day or two to kind of just come up with this brand new concept. And, uh, and when I showed it to them, they're like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. Like, we have to use you. And so you know, the risk paid off because it was like I had already sold them. I didn't even have to worry about the numbers as much as like just making sure that we were able to execute on the design level. So that's where it started. And, um, the Buddha is on the side, so that's kind of a side element off, a, off of a, like a dining room area. 
But the, really the star of the show is that, that pool and the integration of that fire, fire oval fire cutout. Um, and that for me was a specific start. Actually, for the start of the whole pool for me was those um, black steps that kind of are stacked down. Um, and you have that. And then with that tucked on the side, that fireplace, that's, I was like, how cool would it be if we could have a wall cut out and then sandwich um, the, the typical ceramic balls that you usually put just sprinkle around a fire pit, sandwich those with glass panels and then have the fire come right out of that. So that's what really, those two pieces really set the stage for the whole, the whole yard. Whole yard. Yeah, that fire feature, too. And listen, I can sit here and watch your Instagram oh God, for days. Day. I don't watch TV too uh-huh. much, so I can sit there and watch your Instagram for days. And that fire feature is my favorite fire feature. The white wall, the oh. cutout with the... Uh, man, it's just amazing. You see right through it, that design. And every, whoever's looking at it, and they have to go to your to your Instagram right now and, and follow you and look at these jobs because it's... I mean, you could sit on your Instagram for hours. I'd rather do that than watch oh, TV. Geez. <laughs> uh, no, it means a lot. Appreciate you guys. How about the architecture? I know we talked a little bit about it, Chris, too. How important, and you brought this up, how important is it that you design around the architecture of the house? I think it's very important um, because if you don't, you really can make, even though you might have a great concept, if it doesn't integrate specifically with the architecture of the house, it feels like it was an afterthought and it feels like a miss. And so, I always tell clients too, we have a lot more freedom on the backyards than we do on the front. Because when you're driving up to your house, you see the dominant architecture of the house and you really need to make sure it integrates well with whatever wall, water features and so on. The back, you're not really looking at from when you're standing inside, you're not seeing your architecture of the house. So you have a little more freedom. So if people want to deviate from that architecture, um, it's it's a lot more, you have a lot more freedom in the back. Uh, but and usually a lot of the homes we build and, and most homes in general, the architecture of the front is always more dominant. So making sure that's integrated is super important. You know, we're uh, just to get off the subject a little bit. I just wanted to discuss this too. We, we basically work for a landscape supply company. We're curious flooring options. What, what is your go-to? Is it porcelain? Is it decking? Is it natural stone? What, what do you like to use in most of your projects? Porcelain. I've just, I've, I've just pretty much all the designs you're seeing online are almost all porcelain. Um, and we have a couple of different vendors we work with, but truly it's, it's, uh, it's a material that just lasts a long time. Um, I went back to a job that we had done one of our nicer jobs, where we, excuse me, where we just started using it. And this was five years ago and it really looked almost the same. I mean, that's the beauty about porcelain because it's not porous. And if you get the right stuff, you have to make sure it's, it's texturized, so it's not slippery. That's a big, big thing. It's not even just when it rains. It's like just the dew alone can make a tile slippery. So you really have to make sure it's uh, outdoor rated and it has a texture to it. But the longevity of porcelain specifically, is just makes it look like it's been there forever. Where stone, um, we used to do a lot of travertine and limestone. And I'll still do that on vertical surfaces because they don't stain as much. But because they're porous, they absorb a lot of that um, dust and stuff. So you'll, you'll see it age over time, unlike porcelain. Yeah, the supply end of it again. Yeah, you know, um, we are a we we sell a lot of natural stone, and we know the whole supply end of it. And we look at your designs and how complex they are. How complex? What's the complexity of finding suppliers for your vision, and how much you put into one job? Whether it be the tiles, the mosaics, the porcelain, all your vertical elements. How long does that take? to find all your suppliers just for one job? I mean, that process. Um, well, I would say we have it so refined that maybe a day because it's not something I really try to guide clients to only a few options. I used to like go to them with the store and say, here's all your options. And you know, and it was just like, they're overwhelmed. And so as a, as a creative and they're paying me a premium, right? So I want to just give them good guidance and not just show them a hundred options. So. I really try to show them three or four, uh, whether we bring them into our office um, or lately we've been bringing to the job site because of the COVID thing. So it's just a, just a matter of showing them a few options. And I've started to dial the amount of um, like, variant, like varying materials down because I used to do a little bit too much and it just got busy, especially with when you do these ornate projects, you don't want the material to be the star of the show. You really want the, the actual product that's bringing to life to be the star of the show. So. 
I started to notice that, that I was going back to old stuff and I was like, man, I just called out five or six different finishes. It just looks busy. And a lot of our newer stuff you'll see is just, I mean, some of the stuff like Aqua Garden has a lot of different finishes. Um, but overall, we've been trying to be more subtle um, with our selection. I see going back to uh, some of the custom stuff you made, like the, the, um, the holder for over the fire pit. I seen on your Instagram that you were doing a new hovering seating bench that you were kind of fabricating. Now, do you do all that in house or do you kind of contract that out to another person to kind of make up all this different stuff? That you- oh, we do, we do it almost all in house. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really, my, my goal is to uh, eventually have our own furniture and, and lighting line. Um, so a lot of the stuff that we're getting paid to, to do custom for, you know, one off clients, will eventually be our own line that's our that's one of my um, goals for this it's it's really cool too so we had a client um as our first uh, million dollar job that you guys will be coming to and the so it's so crazy you'll come to this job and the yard is not big it's a small yard but he was looking and looking for a modern lamppost couldn't find anything and i was looking too and i couldn't find anything and so i drew something up and we'll have it we'll have it done in two weeks but i think it's going to set a new i'm hoping it'll set a new standard for a, what a modern light um post could look like and we'll be fabricating those and making those and selling them eventually you eventually me- you mentioned your lighting i think you set yourself apart from most people just alone with your lighting you put it oh, in basically you. every crevice of that <laughs> pool that <laughs> landscaping and it just at night the the visual that you have at night with all that lighting it just looks incredible now do you oh. do that on every project, do you try to at least do that with every project? I, I really do because I tell clients how important it is, and, and, and I remind clients when you're using your yard, it's mostly after work, right? So you're really going to be kind of using it later in the day and at night. So it's doing a disservice. Uh, that's why lighting to me is so important because you're doing yourself a disservice if you're not able to maximize the potential of your yard with with good lighting. So, um, and it depends on people's budget because a lot of those lighting are custom and it takes a lot of effort and labor. But overall, on these on more um, you know larger projects, I really try to push that. It's super important. And I'm always trying to go to clients' house even at night just to see what worked and what didn't, so we can get better at it. So different elements of your job sites is uh, you know your your outdoor kitchens and your bar areas. What 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 does it take creatively in in, in the products? What what types of products are you using for your outdoor kitchen and your bar areas? Granite, marble. What type of uh, grills and uh, accessories are are you using? I've been really pushing a lot of granite slabs um, because it just having it, it just makes it look more high end than having tile. We used to do a lot of tile, but it just having those grout lines on a countertop just doesn't look as high end. So that's a big reason of that. And then also um, we just started using a newer product. Uh, uh man was it court well quartzite we can kind of use too because you can't use quartz or caesar stone outside so um yeah and i can't there's another product we just we're just about to start using a decton yeah um, decton i was good i was just gonna say decton yeah. Uh, yeah yeah so that's that's one we're gonna start using too because people want that marble look but you can't use i mean you can but marble just deteriorates over time and stains super easily so um but then for our barbecues, that ranges. It really depends, again, on people's budget from Alfresco, which is a really high-end one, Viking, uh, down to like Bull or uh, a Wolf. Like there's just a large range. I've heard of Wolf. Do you guys work with any Blaze down there by any chance? That uh, doesn't sound familiar. Yeah, Blaze Grills. So we've been, we, uh, we distribute Blaze Grills, which is one of the grills that has a lifetime warranty. We found really successful over the last three years. Something might be something you're looking into, but we have our own fabrication department too. So we've been looking into doing more decton in a lot of granite and we do a lot of two inch natural stone slabs. So it's always interesting to look at uh, what you're doing out there and what we provide for products as well. So that's kind of why we cue these questions to you too. Yeah. Yeah. No, awesome. Used for outdoor heating. I know you do a lot of the fireplaces, but Maybe if something's more inside area, um, what do you guys use for heating elements? Yeah, we do a lot of just the um, gas heaters. Um, I don't know the specifics. I I don't usually call those out. I'll have one of our other guys call those out specifically. But yeah, we integrate some of the gas heaters that either just go flush mount with a ceiling in California rooms or the radiant heaters that kind of get mounted on some of the trellis features. So. So for 2020, going into 2021, what, what could we look forward to with 
California Landscape Studios and Rhyme Realm Designs? Well, I could say, and this is just uh, that it'll be a little less on the modern side and a little bit more on the natural side. I've been getting some uh, just feedback and you just kind of seeing what's out there. Um, and it's interesting, this whole black and white thing has, has been popular for a while, or the high contrast, right? It's just not always black and white, but I feel like it's gonna be a little bit more on the, the neutral tones that will start becoming back and popular. And uh, even Kanye West home, um, like, they, like if you look through it, it's, I feel like that's actually probably gonna be the new standard of look where they had a lot of neutrals, uh, a lot of tans. And um, so I feel like w what you'll start seeing more in 2020 and what I would project is I'm going, to be, I'm going to be kind of playing around with that aspect, more on the natural side and not such uh, dynamic black and white or, or uh, modern elements. I have one that's really cool. Uh, we'll, start, we'll break around in September or October, but it's a 2,000 square foot pool. And uh, it's probably going to be uh, one of our biggest um, lately uh, that we've, we've done. It's a huge pool, and he really wants it to feel natural. Um, and so we, but we're doing, you know, our unique twist to it. So I'm excited to kind of reveal those, those out there. Do you have, any, there. you have any celebrities that you're going to be doing? Any celebrity pools that you have going on in uh, the future? Not, not yet. No, I really don't have any celebrity. Like, it's funny. Um, we, we're doing, we're, well, Jeff Bezos bought a new house in Beverly Hills, and we're doing his next door neighbor. <laughs> so that's wow. Cool. Well, I'll tell you <laughs> what, now that you're on the Outdoor Project podcast, we'll talk to a few of our people and we'll see what we can get going for you. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Give me Justin Bieber or one of those guys out there. Well, if you're, uh, if you're doing that work that close to uh, Mr. Amazon, I guess that's pretty high end. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because like the developer that's building this house, he hired me to do the design and uh, it's like a 20 or $25 million house and it's amazing. But then you look at what's next door and it's a 10 acre parcel that just dwarfs everything. I think Jeff bought it for like uh, 180 million or something crazy. And it's just, that's it. Just, like you, <laughs> I had, I put on one of my stories too, cause I didn't, and this is before even Mr. Bezos bought it or whatever. And it was just like, his hedges are like 40, 50 feet tall, like this massive gate. It's just, anyways, that's as close as I am to a celebrity at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and when, you know, when someone's, when someone's looking to do work with you guys, what, I mean, what are their budgets? I mean, how, how big or small do you guys go? Well, I used to kind of put a, a number on it. And then I was just like, honestly, it comes down to margin. So like we don't typically, I would say like, I mean, uh, we do stuff that's not pools too. So we'll do landscaping and typically starts around a hundred thousand, but, um, and just, but just for outside, I would say from a hundred thousand to a million has been our range, um, of what we've, we've done. Um, some of it's interesting too, because from a, from a business aspect, some of these higher level pools aren't as profitable as your 200, $3,000 projects because you're so much in product development. And then you're like, Oh man, that doesn't work. I've got to do this and got to do this. And so it's very hard to project labor cost. And so doing these high level ones has been great and it gives us exposure, but it's not from a business aspect, it's not good to keep pursuing those as your only type of business. So. Yeah. And we talk about I mean, these jobs, yeah, they look they look outstanding and amazing when you're done. Is the process always that smooth? Do you ever run into to things that issues or problems with maybe your design that maybe can't get done on the project? I always say almost 100% of the time, there's always some kind of problems. Like it doesn't maybe not major ones, and usually we're able to execute and finish the design how we showed it. But I tell our uh, we have project managers that oversee our foreman and our teams. And, I said, you're not project managers, you're problem managers. I said, really, that we're always going to have problems on our job sites. And so that's what we're paid. You guys are paid to do is just to minimize these and, you know, help uh, educate our clients where we're at and what we're, how we're going to navigate through it. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's definitely problems and it's never like so cut and dry, um, especially on new stuff. Probably the bigger the job, probably the more problems that sometimes arise, would you say? A hundred percent. What about your marketing? What do you, what? you know, for your marketing realm designs, are you guys doing more social digital marketing now? I mean, your production, you know, what your marketing end of it, are you guys looking to do a TV show or, you know, what's coming new for realm designs studios? Yeah, I would say it's still, we're still in discovery mode, but we definitely have 
have um, seen the power of marketing. Um, and I think that it's interesting because until about a year and a half ago, the only marketing did was the brochures we leave on someone's door. And, uh, and, um, and now it's just, I'm so glad we started this, but we, like we've getting a lot, a lot of our clients, about 80% of our clients are coming from Instagram is that high. It's, it's insane. And so, um, you know, we have, we have our, like, like Tim, who you just saw or, or send this up. It's like, does our, he's our like video guy. He's, he's the one that's putting these videos you guys are seeing together. Uh, so he's an incredible artist on that end. Uh, we also have some help on, you know, the Instagram, even when, um, posts and stuff, I'm like, you know, I have help with, with people, um, putting that together for me. So it just, because I really want to stay in my business and stay strong on the, uh, on the design side. So, um, because it truly is a full, like it's doing social media as a full-time job I and mean, it's really a, really a full-time job. So you have to kind of figure out what lane you want to stay in and work on that. Talking about marketing, you say 80% comes from Instagram, would you say? Yeah. What would you yeah. say the other 20% is? Is that probably word of mouth? Word of mouth, referrals, oh, you did my neighbors, or I just bought a new house, you did my house four years ago, kind of those scenarios. How about the Aqua Garden the project? Did you get any any other jobs from doing that that job? I know they had a wedding there. I mean, you have yeah. hundreds of eyes on that project. Did you were you able to land any other jobs from that? Um, I it's so funny because literally yesterday I got a call. She said I know Greg was at the wedding, and like this is not exaggerated. She called me yesterday. So, um, but I would say it's more indirectly when people can see what you're capable of doing, it really gives you that stamp of approval. Be like, okay, if you could do that, I know you can do mine. Um, and so I would say more indirectly, it wouldn't be like I knew Greg or I knew this you know client and you know whatever. So, um, so yeah think uh you know you said a year and a half ago five years ago you were probably going to people's kitchen and thumbing through a bunch of pictures just showing your stuff and now your instagram is truly your portfolio and you know you're it's it's an art form too and they they get to know you before your jobs and they build that trust factor and we talk you know a lot a lot of guys right now are using instagram as their portfolio is that kind of the purpose of that or just oh 100 i mean it's really to to establish yourself as authority, right? You really have to like show yourself and you kind of know what you're doing and, and, and gain that trust. Um, and it's also just a way for people to see a specific stock. A lot of people reach out as I love your style. You know, it's not like we can do, we don't, you know, maybe are, aren't focused on like the super traditional stuff. So people are not gonna call us if they're trying to do English garden per se, um, even though we could do it, but it's, it's like, it, it allows you to portray yourself with your specific style aesthetic and then allow people to, it's social, social media is social. So I want people, that's why I even try to put my face on it um, a decent amount, you know, and talk. So it's not like, it's just, here's our pictures. I want people to understand my passion and our business's passion for these projects. I mean, this is truly a passion. My guys are passionate about what we build. And that's why we've had such high employee retention. Even though they've gotten offers for higher pay sometimes, and they're like, no, we just like it here. We like what we're doing, what we're creating here. So. I want people to have that. Um, I want that to come through on our social media. Right. Definitely. Speaking of social media, who produces your videos and really how much time goes into making those videos? Tim, how much time does it take to make you a video? Uh, I mean, <laughs> probably takes like uh, 16 hours to edit one of those fly throughs, something like that. So about two days. Yeah. yeah, about two full days of editing and then another like, you know, day of actually filming so some of those i mean like because you're seeing day and night so we're there you're filming and then coming back you know like an hour to take your lunch break come back so a three minute video probably has a couple hours of footage Definitely. yeah so, so. I, I love it because you're almost creating your own production company you really don't have to depend on an, an hgtv or somebody to you know yeah. put you on their tv show you're creating your own production stuff now that cost of that marketing and that does that go into your, you know, your, your designs, I mean, your overhead and stuff like that. So do you have to take that into account when you're, when you're putting this all together and every pool you're doing, do you, do you have to put, you know, take that into consideration? Absolutely. Yeah. We have a marketing budget. So it's kind of like part of our overhead and it's just, uh, you know, every job we sign, obviously a little bit goes towards that, but, um, um, we're kind of at a point too, where I think everybody, every business gets to it. Like you can continue to grow. 
um, and get bigger and you know because there's more opportunities that come your way or you can kind of just dial down and just try to be the best possible and that's where we're at we're really not trying to get bigger not hire more people um, I've been on that train twice and it just hasn't worked um, it always gets overwhelming and I feel very good even this COVID thing is in, 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 in a weird way been good for our business because it's really helped us uh, understand that it's not growing that's just it's it's like how can we be better with what we have and so anyways uh, like with our marketing it's feel like I want to keep that flow coming in but I'm not trying to get use our marketing to get another 40 guys on board 40 employees on board you know I have 100 employees it's, it's just that's not my aspiration anymore speaking of COVID-19 yeah how is that affecting your business right now I know you said it's it's maybe helping a little bit are you guys in construction right now? Are they kind of shutting you down? Are you able to work? Yeah, so we so we basically um, have been able to work with California's uh, stay-at-home orders. They still, like, our business is still considered essential. Um, and so when all this came out, all our new jobs got on hold. Like, everybody that was like, you know, we want to hire you said, we got to wait. And now, in the last week and a half, we've had so many phone calls. Like, we can't stand it anymore. We're you wait? can't stand looking at a blank lot we want or we want to upgrade our house and so I think because people are so much in their homes that this specific industry is actually benefiting um, from it you know so great yeah and we know you got a beautiful family at home is everybody healthy everybody's good thank you yes we're we just moved recently to our new pro- our ranch and it's five acres and it just having the space has been a dream so it's been two years in the making I mean it's just been a ton of sacrifice ton of risk <laughs> to get to this point, yeah. but uh, it's just been worth it. Seeing my kids just thrive here, um, and we don't have it all set up. It's not like, you know, it's all dialed in like my jobs, but just having this space and the openness and, and nature around has been great for them. You know, you see you see a lot of landscapers, like in our, our shoes, you see a lot of landscapers that are constantly making other people's houses beautiful in their own house. They don't, They don't have the time to take care of it. In your new house, you said you just recently bought a house. What do you have planned? Do you have any uh, exotic pools planned for the back of your house or what? 100%. <laughs> so if I want to live out my uh, my tagline from residence to resort, then this guy has to be the number one re- res- residence to resort scenario. So, um, yeah, I definitely have some big plans here. So uh, we, haven't, we haven't started anything quite yet because I'm really trying to make sure my business is healthy. Um, I really don't want to just, you know – put put money into my own space uh, until I really feel like I'm in a good space uh, for the business. That's my number one priority, but we're definitely enjoying have some, I've been some nice finished areas. So it's, I'm just saying I don't have any pools yet, a pool yet, I guess, but uh, it's very, very nice. Your wife hasn't been on your case. I mean, I'm sure she sees all this stuff you yeah. do. She probably <laughs> wants her pool. Your kids probably want their pool. What At is, least a spa, honey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But when, when I show, when I actually finish it, it'll be interesting for, for people to see because it will not be uh, what I typically build. It'll be much more natural feeling like I have some big boulders that are like as big as minivans here that are just massive and so I'm going to integrate those and have a very natural creek like kind of feel because it fits with this kind of ranch theme that we have here at the property you know in the meantime just go buy one of the blue blow up pools and, and put that back there. yeah there you go there, put there a couple go. boulders around <laughs> it yeah you know we got to give a little plug to Sensenig's Landscape Supply and Yukon Valley Natural Stone because we do uh we do own a, a natural stone company called Yukon Valley that we sell throughout right. the whole country. So that's kind of our gig too, the boulders and all the natural stone and stuff. And we find the beauty in, you know, in, in natural stone. So yeah, we'd love absolutely. to hear that from you. Absolutely. Beautiful, man. I, I, I just can't wait to come to California and see these jobs that uh, you're creating. I mean, it's, it's nice to talk to you on the, uh, on the computer here, but it's going to be even better. Absolutely. Yeah. It's all excited. I know uh, a few of us. Ben over here's been to, to California. Me and Joe, you haven't been to California. I haven't been to California. We're yet. looking forward to to flying over um, and getting over to see some of the projects you've Project done and meeting done. you, of awesome. course. But where um, anyone listening to this podcast, where can they find you? They can find us um, on our website or Instagram. Both are uh, their Realm Design on Instagram and California Safe Studios. Uh, or our website, which are realmdesign.com. So anyone that's listening, we can, and we can service everywhere. So it's like, we really have a system where we've, 
And I even have a, a, a video we made that even if people are interested in the process of how we do it remotely, design remotely, we can share that. So, Justin, I just bought a new pool. I have a pool at my house. It's a little older. Are you doing any giveaways anytime soon or what? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Fly we'll right over see. to New York State. My pool is ready to go for you. Whatever <laughs> you want right, to do. Right. Put you in, I'll put you in the ring. Justin, thank you for sitting down with us. It's been a pleasure, man. And uh, keep on, uh, keep up with the good work and stay healthy with you and your family. Thanks, guys. Same for you. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it.